Good reminders to Trust team. Uh, thank you. This was a great talk. I just wish uh, we have one member or two members from the Commission here. Can we start on this as a policy document? Because frankly, I believe this is, Sabine is completely right. There is a large uh, part of Europe that is being, shall we say, since I'm Icelandic, defiled by English. <coughs> But, uh, and, but it's not just that. This goes links directly into the talk of Stefan Krauer about social pollution, or was it a different term? Um, uh, and this together makes quite a strong position regarding the infrastructure that we need to create for Europe uh, in order for us to be multicultural for not just another five years or 10 years, but another 100 years, please, because I will live a very long time. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of like um, maybe even the opposite direction to uh, what Ruben here discussed. And it's in the sense that um, are we really sure that language technologies will help preserve languages? Might they just not accelerate the process of languages mixing and fusing and many disappearing? And uh, that's if, uh, something that happens. I don't know whether it will accelerate it. It might. It might. It, we don't know really. Um, I think that, that um, as Hans also mentioned, that people uh, at a certain point when they see that they cannot lo use their language anymore, they will react. And, and that's, that is, I think, is, I think there is uh, somehow there will be uh, a development where you go to a certain point and then there will be a sort of kind of counter rea re reaction. And uh, I think that is, um, that's difficult to measure when that is going to happen. Hmm. I'm just wondering how much uh, a corporation is in the Nordic countries and actually implementing this uh, very beautiful language policy, uh, especially, I mean, in, for example, joint research projects. Um, the, Nord the Council of Nordic Ministers has uh, this on the agenda all the time, and they are launching projects all the time trying to uh, implement this. And so, uh, for instance, they bring together the forces now to monitor also the mutual understanding between languages, and here translation also has uh, a role, but there is very little money. I mean, there are very many good in intentions, but there's very little money. And when I look at all the projects that are here, if anybody is working with a Scandinavian language, please tell me because I'd like to keep track of it, and it would save it would save help save money, you know. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Your comments on the dangers of the Scandinavian languages disappearing, perhaps one should look at even larger languages. I think right here, even in Berlin, and if I'm not wrong, German at this point still is the language in Europe with the largest community. Uh, there's also the same thing happening. More and more English is creeping in, and if you look at what the younger generation is using, both in terms of text messages and in terms of advertising, you see the use of English happening there as well. So this is not something unique to the smaller languages. Uh, I myself uh, live in Vienna at the moment. Both of my daughters graduated from Viennese universities. They were more or less forced to write their uh, master's and PhD thesis in English in order to be accepted. Uh, and I think you have this situation in practically all countries of the world outside of the English-speaking community. So that, that's one thing. And the other thing is just, just a thought to keep in mind, and that is that uh, a few hundred years ago, uh, the English were invaded, and these uh, people came from France and added a few words to their language, and that's the result. This hodgepodge of uh, Old French and Anglo-Saxon and the Danes from Jutland, and somehow this is the language we're ending, we ended up with in England, and perhaps there'll be a new similar mix a little ways down the road.
from the further mix of languages. Just my thoughts. I think one of the reasons why Dan Danes are, uh, have this easy access to English is, if we call, is ex exactly that. I mean, it's the same language family. But sometimes I always think we get our old words back, you know, when we import new English language. <laughs> so it's uh, a very strange situation. But I think, I mean, the, uh, the languages will not disappear. I mean, the, they have a strong written traditions, and will, I'm not concerned that the languages will disappear. But we probably will end in a situation of diglossia in certain areas, and that will s spread more and more, as you say, specifically, specifically in the scientific area. I mean, there's nobody writing about gene, genomes or, or uh, nanotechnology in Danish at the moment, I'm, I'm quite certain. So, so um, the question is, does it matter? Will it, will it really uh, impede our language slowly? But I mean, they, it will not happen in a hundred years, but still, I think there is a need for concern and also to, in, to investigate more what is going on here. Before I ask the next uh, call for the next question, uh, let me just add something because you also commented on German. The people who use uh, English words in every second sentence are usually not the ones who master English very well. <laughs> so those are usually just a short observation. <laughs> Just one single comment, actually coming from uh, being an outsider in this community, but uh, being very much an insider of uh, what happens in the educational front of the European Union uh, policy, I would say that uh, the problems mentioned in education have been identified already, and, um, for instance, in the uh, directorate uh, managing the Erasmus Mundus education uh, programs. Uh, English is not uh, promoted, so the countries who participate, uh, which participate, uh, participate with a very strong commitment of educating the next generation of computational English machine translation people in the language of the country they study in. Uh, actually, for the new phase of the Erasmus Mundus educational uh, program, um, consortium programs have to make commitment that the national language of universities participated has to be strongly um, um, you know, passed to the people who participate. So just just a general point. That's really good news. Yeah. Really, no, but that is yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> yeah. uh, much like your idea about the establishment as some kind of indicator for uh, evaluating the status of uh, language development or language situation in a particular country. And uh, we had a similar discussion at the, at the Commission of uh, Official Language in Latvia that uh, by agreeing of some kind of matrix or, or set of indicators, uh, we could like uh, better analyze and compare the language situation in different countries and for different raise awareness about the uh, problems in this field uh, on European level and maybe on global level as well as we do have a uh, human uh, development uh, report by United Nations with a very strong influence. We need like language development report uh, with uh, comparable indicators. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, uh, I want to ask, uh, since we are in this conference, uh, what, what are potential benefits from a collaboration of the MetaNet with this kind of national or regional activities? That is, is it part of the planning for, for you as a, a Nordic Language Council to be informed through the MetaNet about what is happening in the other languages, because this was the question you asked. And for MetaNet to uh, find out these initiatives and involve them in a way in the discussion. <laughs> Yeah, it would be a good idea. We haven't really uh, made any strategy for that, but uh, of course it will be relevant and very interesting to do it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, thank you for the, for the positive answer. Uh, clearly, when we invited uh, Sabina and, 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 and also asked Alice uh, to, to, to speak, it was clear that in, those are two examples out of many examples of um, possible connections between the uh, people who are worried, either officially or unofficially, about the different language communities, 
and, uh, and, and, and metamet. And it seems that they need each other, because uh, it seems that neither will we be able, without any pressure from the language communities, to achieve that much. Uh, Kimmel pointed this out very early in the morning, uh, on the level that really matters. Uh, nor will uh, good initiatives like the statement program yeah, or the, 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 the Nordic uh, the Language Council research program uh, be able to get the type of continuity. Yeah? There's always this pendulum swinging back and forth and lots of fashions coming in every couple of years. They will, neither will they be able to, to, to have this continuity without some pressure also from, mm -hmm. from other countries, from other communities and maybe even from the European Union. Level. So I, I think you are very right. Uh, I think that's mm -hmm. the earth, an, an earth, it's an urgent task to work together. Mm -hmm. Would you read something? Definitely, yes. Yeah. Okay, are there any other? So if there are really no other questions, that means that you are maybe not satisfied, but saturated at this point. Uh, so thanks to all of the uh, speakers again, to Sabine first, to our last speaker, and at the same time, in the applause, please uh, give a hand to all the speakers who contributed to today.